Now I'm asking that the Holy Spirit quicken this to each and every one of our hearts today, that we would receive with understanding what you are speaking to us. May your divine will be accomplished. And Father, again, I'm asking you to remove abortion from the United States of America, that you would totally remove it, that it would become Ill illegal for it any abortions in America. I ask it in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. 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 Now I want to, to share with you for the mothers today, the Mother's Day message that the Lord has given me. Again, I ask you to turn in your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31. And Father, again, I'm asking for a fresh anointing to be able to speak your word. Lord, I'm asking you, may the Holy Spirit go before me, prepare each and every one of our hearts to receive with understanding what the Spirit is saying to the church today. I ask a special blessing again on every mother present. I ask it in Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Proverbs 31, verse 1. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. I want you to notice. The prophecy that his mother taught him. Now let's go from verse 10 to verse 30. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She rises up also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she planted a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength, and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle doth not, goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretches out her hand to the poor, yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She makes herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and sells it and to delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. I ask you to consider what the scripture is saying. She looketh well to her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children will rise up and call her blessed. I say to you this morning, I've read this portion of Scripture many times. I've even spoken from it again. King Lemuel had a good mother. Her words to her son, recorded in Proverbs 31, 1, urge him, to be pure, to be sober, to be honest, 
and compassion, a compassionate king. She taught him these things. This is how we should live. And she diligently taught it. As I read that again this week, I was reminded of Charles and John Wesley. Their mother, their mother was like this that I've just read to you. She schooled them herself. She schooled them herself. She taught them the Bible. Every day, every day, they had to take a certain time. They did their, home, their schoolwork, and then they spent a certain amount of time, their mother reading the Bible and teaching them. One day, they lived in a parsonage. And one day, the parsonage caught on fire. And it was actually, it was just during, during the night. And John Wesley was upstairs, sleeping upstairs. Well, the mother went through the house getting the rest of them out. She had 19 children. At this point, 10 of them were still alive. And she was getting them out. When she got out onto the lawn, she realized that John wasn't there. But the house was too much on fire. The firemen, fighters could not get in. And she started crying out to the Lord. Well, John didn't, like I said, he was asleep. He didn't know what was going on, according to the story I've read. He woke up and he felt the heat. So he went over to the window. He opened the window and he saw all that was going on down below. Still didn't realize the house was on fire. People were screaming. He stepped out onto the balcony and somebody looked up and saw him. And one of the men clumb up the balcony, brought John down, and gave him to his mother. There in that spot, his mother looked up to God. Now I'm reading a book that's the life story of, of John and uh, Charles Wesley. The mother looked up to God and she said, I believe you have spared him to be a servant of yours. I will do everything I can to lead him in that direction and teach him your word. We all know what became of John Wesley. He was the father of the Methodist Church. His mother taught him and instructed him. So I say today as I read about King New, how fortunate that he had such a mother. Many children and young people today don't receive this kind of teaching from the one who brought them into the world. Many mothers are not concerned about church, about getting their children in church, about their souls. They're so busy doing other things that they do not consider this part of their lives. Too many mothers, fathers also, are saying their ch to their children by the example that they set that sin in its pursuit is the way to life's happiness. The things, and I want you to remo remember, church, for the ladies, as the men as well, your ladies, your daughters are watching you. Your daughters are watching you. Everything you do, you're training them. You're teaching them. How will they fare? Where will they spend eternity? What kind of mother are you? Think about it. Okay. Fathers, same thing. Same thing. I don't know how many boys I've heard, I want to be just like my dad. I want to be just like my dad. I told you once before, but let me remind you of this. Several years ago, we had a family, they were in the Navy, and they were attending the church, and their children were attending. They had the cutest little boy. He was probably about four or five years old. One Sunday morning, I always stood out front and greeted the people as they came in. One Sunday morning, he jumped out of the car, and he ran over to and stood in front of me. He looked up at me and said, Pastor, look, I'm just like you. 
I looked at the little guy. He had a little suit on. He had a shirt and tie. He kept after his parents, and they finally took him out and bought him a suit with a shirt and tie. He wanted to be just like the pastor. Folks, it spoke volumes to me. It spoke volumes to me. I say to you as parents, listen, our children are watching more than we think they are. More than we think they are. So I thank God as I stand before you this morning for all of you mothers that are sitting here this morning. We are, you are counterparts. You are counterparts to Lemuel's mother. By word, by deed, and by example, exhorting your children to Christ-likeness. Okay. We set aside one day a year to honor mothers. And I'm great, glad that we do. The majority of them deserve it. They deserve it. And they are truly VIPs. So I stand before you today and preparing and waiting upon the Lord for this service. I could just picture many of you where you're sitting. And I would name your name and I'd say, Lord, I thank you for this mother. I thank you for this mother. The examples that they are setting. Abraham Lincoln declared, no man is poor who has a godly mother. No man is poor who has a godly mother. Okay. A Spanish proverb reads, an ounce of mother is worth a pound of priest. An ounce of mother. We had a deacon, one of the men in our church, Brother Paul Rambo. He's gone on to be with the Lord now. But he and I were working on the church one day and doing some stuff. And it was not too far, Mother's Day was coming. And we got to talking about it. And he said to me, he said, Pastor, he said, you're, you're going to learn this one day. But no man is ever the same after his mother passes. He's never the same. Think about it. I thought about that. My mom has passed now. She's my, both my mom and dad are in heaven. But folks, I cannot tell you the times that I've sat at my desk doing some study and just pause for a moment and say, man, I wish I could pick up that phone and call my mother just to speak something, just to see, hear the sound of her voice. What a reward when we have good mothers, good mothers. And someone else said, the instruc instruction received at mother's knees together with pious and sweet souvenirs of the fireside are never effaced entirely from the soul. Never, they're never erased from our soul. The things that we've learned from our mothers, the small little things that they teach us. One thing that really has spoke to my heart when I was growing up, a few years, I was, we were pastoring here, and my mother was in the hospital, not expected to live. So the doctor told my dad to gather the family. And we came. And we were standing around mom's bedside in the hospital. And as you know, I've, I'm from a family of nine. There's five boys and four girls. We were all in the room standing around. And everyone was crying. Everyone was crying. But I couldn't cry. I had no tears. And I, I felt bad. I thought, what does the family think of me? I waited till everyone left the room. And then I went over to my mom. I said, Mom, I know that all of the rest of them are crying, hurting. I said, Mom, I'm hurting just as much. I love you, but you know that I'm not a crier. I'm not a crier. But Mom, I love you, and I'm going to miss you much. My mom did something then that I will never be able to forget. She reached out and took my hand. 
Now, my mother lived on a farm. Her, her mom and dad were dairy farmers. She took my hand and she said to me, son, always remember, a, by a bawling calf soon forgets its mother. A bawling calf. You don't know how that ministered to me because I was feeling bad because I, I couldn't cry. I thank God for my mother and I thank God for godly mothers. The things that I, I learned from my mother didn't realize that, that I was learning them until I was off and on my own. I guess I was kind of like all teenagers. You're growing up, you think your parents don't know anything. I mean, you've learned it all. Okay. But once you get on, on your own, once you start having a family, you realize how smart your parents were. So I thank God for my mother. Mother, you have a high and holy calling. By your words and by your example, you are to teach your children the fear of the Lord. What a challenge, especially in this day and age. What a challenge, but what a privilege to be able to teach your children. The word said, her children rise up and call her blessed. Several years ago, I read an article on Napoleon. I was kind of just reading about him in this article. It said, Napoleon, the great emperor of France, was attending a banquet given in his honor. Sitting there beside him was this very wealthy society woman. And as Napoleon was talking, she leaned over to him and said, My emperor, will you tell me what it is France needs most in this greatest hour? Okay. She no doubt thought that Napoleon would make a request for either money or better armament and to equip the fighting forces of France. Something that she could provide that would draw attention to herself. That's what she was hoping to receive. To her surprise, something that would put her just a little higher on the social ladder. Look what so-and-so did for France. To her surprise, Napoleon turned and quietly said, what France needs most, what France needs most of all is mothers. France needs mothers that will raise their children right. As I stand before you this morning, the condition that our nation is in, all the violence, all of the corruption, all the immoralness, all the ungodliness, all of the children that are running the streets on their own, not homeless, they have homes to live, but no supervision. They're running the streets, getting into trouble all the time. I say to you this morning, mothers, what the United States of America needs most? Godly mothers. Godly mothers. They will teach and train their children. Godly mothers that will make sure that their children are in church. But let me say something about that. Make sure their children are in church. They're with them. Don't just bring them to church and drop them off. If that's what's happening, that's the reason when a t teenagers get old enough to make their own, they don't come to church. Mom and dad didn't come to church. They made me go, but they didn't come. So why should I go to church? Make sure that they are in church with you. I believe, as I stand before you, there are six things that such a mother will possess and cherish. First off, she will have a Savior. She will be a true believer. Acts 16, 31. And, and I'm going to read these scriptures to you as we go, because 
Listen to Acts 16, 31. And it says, And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. I want to draw your attention to that first portion. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Moms, dads, it has to start with us. We have to be that example. She will be a Christian. The Lord Jesus Christ will be the center of her home, and she will follow him. She begins to follow him. The Lord Jesus Christ becomes her best friend. When there is a need, she will know my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. She will know how to take care of her children. She will know how to take them to the throne of grace, to call up on God for them, and to know that God will hear and answer her prayers. One of my favorite scriptures, Jeremiah 33, 3, he said, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know not of. When we're having trouble answering our children's questions, when they're little, it's pretty easy. But as they get older, the questions get deeper and more serious. If we don't have an answer, if we're really serving the Lord Jesus Christ, we know where to go. Mothers will know where to go because he said, call me and I will answer you. He hears us and he answers. Godly mothers know that. Second, she will have a church. She will have a church where she faithfully attends it. Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. No, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. Draw attention again, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another so much the more as you see that day approaching. I believe, as I said earlier, we're living in that day. Soon, very soon, I believe Jesus is coming back for his church. She will love her church and faithfully attend the services. She will know that after she has been through a hard week, she can come to church, and there in the presence of God, all the wrinkles of life will be smoothed out. Coming in, I don't know how you feel, but when we enter in and really begin to worship the Lord, you can just feel the, the Spirit settling over. What a privilege it is to gather together together to sing and praise and worship the Lord and allow the Spirit to direct us on. She will have a Bible. She will have a Bible. Second Timothy chapter, chapter 2, verse 15. And it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the the word of truth. A godly woman will be in the word of God, studying the word of God, teaching it to her children. A Bible that she has read every day. So many Bibles are laying on the coffee table or sitting on a shelf. You have, do you have a, oh yeah, I have a Bible. The question should be, do you read your Bible? Do you read it? A godly woman will read her Bible every day. At night, when the rest of the family has gone to bed, she will sit and read that precious book. Why do I say that? Because I'm taking it from my wife. As our kids were growing up, she was so busy taking care of them, doing, they lack uh, one day of being a year apart. They were that close. 
she was taking care of them all the time. Okay, all the time. She, even when we lived out in the country on a dirt road, she would walk them down to where the bus would pick them up, stay there with them, and then walk back. So she didn't have the time to spend reading her Bible that she wanted. But many has been the night after they're in bed, no television, she's got her Bible out, reading it, reading it. I thank God. I get up now in the morning about a half hour after she does, when I come into the living room, where do I find her? Sitting with her Bible open, searching the scriptures. A godly mother, she will have a Bible and she will read it and use it. Sometimes those Bibles will be tear stained. God's speaking to the heart where you're reading and it just touches your heart. Tears will run down and drip on the Bible. It will be a part of her daily life, and she will walk it. Amen. The fourth thing, she will have a pathway to the throne of grace. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6. And I, I want to read verse 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, Pray to thy Father, which is in secret, and the Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. She'll have a prayer closet where she can go and get alone with God, just her and the Lord. A secret place, a secret place. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of of the Almighty. Many times I've had people that quote that ask me, Pastor, where's the secret place of the Most High? I tell them, go to Matthew chapter 6 and look at verse 6. Okay. When thou enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. That secret place of the Most High is in your prayer closet where it's just you and Him. And we can talk to him, share with him. Okay. I want us to remember, God, God wants every one of us, men included, to learn and understand the importance of intercessory prayer. Okay. How to enter into our prayer clauses and get alone with God until the answer comes. Until the answer comes. Day after day, if you're praying that same prayer, you pray it till the answer comes. Keep asking. Keep asking. God hears and he answers. But it's in his time. God knows. I've told you before, but let me remind you. God is never too early and he's never too late. He's always right on time. So when we're seeking God for certain things, God knows when we need it. And that's when he supplies it, when we really need it. The fifth thing, she will have faith. She will have faith. Mark's Gospel, chapter 11. Mark's Gospel, chapter 11. And I want to read, whoop, made it, passed it off. I want to share these scriptures with you because we need to understand what is our position should be in the Lord Jesus Christ. Mark's Gospel, chapter 11. I want to read verses 22 to 24. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. Excuse me, that's not, that's 10. I read the wrong one. Mark's Gospel, chapter, chapter 11, verse 22 to 24. And Jesus answered, saith unto him, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever you desire, when you pray, 
Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. When we're praying for what we're praying for is God's will, we will have it. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. And if he hears us, we know that we have the petitions that we have desired of him. When we're praying God's will, he will give us what we're answered for. Number six, she will have hope. She will have hope. Let's go to 1 Peter. She will have hope. 1 Peter says, Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason for the hope that is in you. Be ready to give anyone that asks you, Why are you so happy? Why are you seeming so content? What's the reason for this hope? That hope is that there is life after death, eternal life in Jesus Christ. And we will have that hope. A, a true mother serving the Lord will have that hope always with her. Never doubting. Deep down inside, that hope is there. Okay. So I ask you this, this morning in closing this. What legacy, what legacy will you leave your children? Will they say, my mother was a woman of God? She taught me about Jesus. Will they be able to say that? Okay. I ask you to read again with me. Proverbs 31, chapter 27. Proverbs 31, chapter 20. Verse 27, excuse me, not chapter, but verse 27 through 30. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. A woman that feareth the Lord. So I say to you this morning, husbands that are sitting next to your wives, children that are here in the service this morning, thank God for your godly mother. Thank God. Just bow your head with me for a moment, please. Father, again, I want to take this time to thank you for godly women, for godly mothers, those that are faithful, obedient to your word, living the life before their husbands and their children. I thank and praise you for them today. And I'm asking you that this day be a special blessing in their lives today, throughout the day. Father, may they feel a special touch from you. I ask it in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. 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 We were going to do communion this morning, but the hour is getting away. So if you're with your permission,